estimating partial derivatives with respect to x and with respect to y using a contour diagram. So as we take a look at this, we were really concerned about this, um, this point, 3, 5, on our contour diagram. So 3, 5 is kind of outlined right over here. We've already set it, so we have an x value of 3 and a y value of 5. Now we want to look at what the z value is that comes out of this, or g value, if you want to think about it that way. So zooming in real quick, what we want to do is this is right on this contour map, this line that goes over here at 0.6. So let's start with that. We can say that g of 3, 5 equals 0.6. All right, next, in order to find these um, partial derivatives, what we want to do is when we have the one with respect to x, that means that our x values can change. They can move to the right or to the left, but our y values are going to stay consistent. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and go over to the next contour line, uh, this circle going around here, and we want to estimate about where that's at. All right, now that corresponds with 0.7. If I go all the way around here, you can see that it's labeled 0.7 up here at the top. And that corresponds with an x value. Let's say that's right around 4.2. So we can say g of 4.2 comma 5 is a z value of 0.7. Now if I want to estimate this rate of change, which is basically a slope, we can do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But we want, to change, uh, we want to see how the z values change. All right, so 0 0.7 minus 0 0.6 divided by the ones that changed were our x values. So 4.2 minus 3 goes in the denominator on this one. So that's going to be 0.1 divided by 1.2, which is 1 12th exactly. Or we could say that's approximately going to be, let's look at my notes. Um, that's going to be approximately 0 0.83. All right. Nothing said that we had to go from the point we really care about to the right all the way over here, though. Instead, we could have gone from here and gone to this point to the left, right about there on our diagram. All right. That would have corresponded with g of 2.4 for an x value, comma 5, went with the next smaller contour. Uh, line that goes around at 0.5. All right, again, we could calculate what's that average rate of change. So in this case, it would be like 0.5 minus the one we really care about, 0.6, divided by 2.4 minus 3, which works out to be negative 0.1 divided by uh, negative 0 0.6 which is one sixth or approximately one point, sorry, point one six seven. All right, so as in most, most things, we're trying to get this estimate. Well, the slope here in between here would be one twelfth. All right, the slope in between these two we said was one sixth. So the true slope when we're standing right here is probably somewhere in between those two. So we can get an even better estimate of this if we go ahead and take the average. So if we try taking the average 0 0.83 plus 0 0.167, that doesn't seem right, it's uh, 0 0.083 plus 0 0.167, divide that two ways, that's going to be an estimation of about 0.125, which makes more sense. All right. Um, so that would probably be the best estimate of exactly what the slope is, that uh, partial derivative as we move left to right, right at that given point. Now to do one vertically, the partial derivative with respect to y, we're still going to focus on that one point, 3, 5 equals 0.6. But instead of moving horizontally like we did with the partial with respect to x, we can move this vertically and go up to the next one straight above it. That's going to correspond to right around g of 3, comma 5.8 is equal to 0.7. And let's go ahead and find the one down below that as well. So if I go from the point we really care about and go down to this next one, which corresponds with 0.5, that would be the g of 3, 
comma 4.5 works out to be 0.5 as an output. All right, so if I put these first two together and find their slope, it's going to be 0.7 minus 0.6. Now, the things that changed this time were our y values because we're doing the partial with respect to y, so 5.8 minus 5. So 0.1 divided by 0.8 works out to be 1 8 or that's exactly 0.125. If instead we went with this pair, right, moving down below instead of up, what we'd get is that slope is going to correspond with 0.6 minus 0.5 divided by 5 minus 4.5. So 0.1 divided by 0.5 is 1 fifth or 0.2. All right. Again, if you want to get an even better estimate between these two, we take their average, and their average would be 0.125 plus 0.2, all divided by 2, which works out to be right about 0.1625. All right. So that's how we could estimate these partial derivatives using a contour diagram. All right. Now, where's the where on this diagram is? Um, the partial with respect to x the greatest and the partial with respect to y the greatest. What we're looking at on this is we're thinking if I'm moving straight left to right, and it doesn't have to be on this line that I, I have drawn on here already, um, but if we're moving left to right, where on this entire map is at the very steepest. So what we have going on here is this is basically some sort of, um, this is like a hill, right? The smallest numbers are on the outside, and the largest numbers are on the inside, and it incrementally gets higher and higher. So what we were kind of looking for on this is where are, left to right, where are these lines, the contour mapping lines, closest together? And my guess would be somewhere over here on this side, either in between these two, or maybe even all the way on the outside, or maybe right on the right-hand side. One of those points is where I would pick out. All right, that would be where it would be the very, very steepest um, where the partial with respects to x would be the greatest. All right, now the partial with respect to y would be we're looking vertically. Uh, where exactly is it the very, very closest together, um, these contour lines? And I would say it's somewhere right around here, at, uh, I don't know, 4.5, 5, somewhere in here. Um, right about here, maybe you go one above, one below that, or somewhere corresponding right around here up at the top. So you would try to map that out and figure out where are they the exact closest. So that's where we would say these are their greatest. All right, hope this helps out as you're trying to understand going from a contour diagram or contour mapping and understanding partial derivatives. Good luck.